God snatched you from the hands of the devil and said, get it together. Preaching a word that's pray that it changes your life and it changes your life, touches your life forever. It's going to be in the New Testament. It's way in the back in the book of Timothy. It's going to be Second Timothy, not First Timothy, but Second Timothy, chapter two. And if we can please stand for the word of God. Hallelujah. All right. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. When you're there, please say amen. All right. Just excuse my throat. I'm coming, you know, getting over this cough that I had for many days. The word of God reads. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you anoint my lips. And let it be you speaking through me. Open up the ears of every single person that is in this house. Let them hear your voice. And I ask you these things in Jesus' name. And everyone say, amen, amen. All right, you may have a seat. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, how are you doing? Glad you're here. I need you to pay attention and don't fall asleep. Get off your phone. Should have gone to the bathroom before you sat down. That's it. The other neighbor, just say thank you. All right. Um, this past week, we've been having an amazing, amazing week. We had Sharon Billings that was here, and she brought the roof down in this house and got used her in a mighty way. She went to go preach at my son's uh, church on Wednesday. She brought a team, a team that is a praying team. A team that I believe that God sent to reinforce me and my wife and the entire church. Because last week, the people that were oppressed, sad, broken down, were actually challenged to stand. And not many people would stand because of embarrassment. But to the surprise of us, lots and lots of people stood. And the other challenge was to take a step of faith and walk to the altar. And they did that as well. And that day chains were broken in the name of Jesus people were delivered in the name of Jesus hallelujah people left here filled with the Holy Ghost and one of the things that we kept on hearing throughout the week we met with her the other day as well and say the, the church is about to experience a baptism of the Holy Spirit a fire a fresh fire is about to just go throughout the congregation and I believe in that oh you should get excited for that I'm talking a fresh wind, fresh fire in the name of Jesus. And some people might not get excited not even knowing what it means. But this passage that I just read that I, I, was, I was talking to my son earlier and I was like the only thing passing through is the thing that has gone through the fire. And I don't know anyone here that's gone through a fire or maybe you're in a fire. Anyone going through a fire? in a fire. I'm talking about some tough situations in your life. Praise God that you're just going through in the name of Jesus. You're not staying there. You're going through. Um, Paul says this utensils that are being used are in a great house. In the great house, Paul, that he uses this, it's a picture of a, of a house, church, a place where we come and worship here. And this is what Paul's referring to is the church. And the great house has various vessels. 
a variety of vessels. It has bowls, it has uh, some, some vases, maybe they have uh, flowers. And back in the Bible days, in Jesus' days, you would walk into a house and it had different vessels, vessels that were made out of clay, vessels that carried, that were used to go and get water from the well to bring to the house so the people can wash their hands and their feet before they go in there. Vessels that would, you would put trash, but at the end of the feast, they would take the trash out. There were just all these kinds of vessels. And some were jugs and some were different containers in all over the house. And But there were, there were some vessels that were of honor and some vessels were that were of dishonor. Each and every one of us were created for a different purpose. Some were called vessels of honor and some uh, vessels of dishonor. Some for honorable purpose and some for dishonorable. Those who were used for dishonorable purpose was something that I want to talk to you here today. The vessels that that, that the Bible is talking about were designed to be containers. What the vessel contained in the inside determined whether or not that vessel would be a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor. Now, you may take a look at your life at this time as you're sitting there of your own life at this moment and ask yourself, what do I contain in my life? So take, take, a, take a few seconds. Just, just ask yourself, because nobody knows, maybe the person not even next to you, but God knows it all. And if you're a vessel of God, God created you to be a vessel as a container. And what you contain in the inside, and you ask yourself, what I contain in my life, what are the contents in my life? Are they pure? Is what I carry pure? Does my life contain filth? What is it that's inside of you? Now, is the vessel that's inside of you, what's in you, is it destined for destruction? Unless there's a purifying work done in, in your life, unless there's like a vessel that's going to come and cleanse you, nothing's ever going to change. There's a thirsty world out there, a world that is hungry for God, thirsty for God. And God has created you to be a vessel that will contain his love. Where's that jug at? Oh, right here. I was talking to one of my spiritual sons in the office. It's always right on time word because every time they ask a question, the answer is right in front of me through something that I see. And I saw this and I told him, he asked me a question. I said, give me that jug right there. And I got this jug. I collect antiques, so I have a lot of old stuff. And so this jug, this is you and I. What we contain inside of there, is it filth? Is it, is it something that's going to destroy someone else? Because as containers that God makes us, God created us to be containers to carry the love of God inside of us. So if you have an employee, a loved one, a husband, a son, how you pour into them, what you pour into them should be nothing but love. Because if you don't pour love into them, then your container is not filled with what the God has in store for you or he created you. So he created you with a purpose. And the purpose is that you, when people see you, they know that what you're about to pour into them is nothing but love. I told you that I have a friend of mine that I love calling just to hear him tell me good stuff. That's it. I call him for other reasons, but he, we never get a chance to talk. Let me tell you how it goes. I told you before. Pastor, how are you doing? No, 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 no. Pastor, how are you doing? This is him telling me. So I'm doing great. I know, man of God, let me tell you, it's an honor for me to even receive a phone call from you. You're so busy. You're a blessed man. You're amazing, Pastor. Pastor, you don't even know what the Lord has in store for you. He's about to open up doors that no man can open. And I'm listening to the phone. He's pouring all that in me. You are an amazing man of God. I don't know how you do it, Pastor. If I could just get a little bit of what you have, I would be blessed. But, Pastor, you and your wife and your children, children's children, you 
you've got something coming your way. God is about to expand your tents. Your building that you're in is too small. God has something bigger for you. And he's pouring and pouring. And I'm receiving and receiving in the name of Jesus. Are you that kind of container that you pour that into your children, into your wife, into your family? Are you that kind of a husband that you just tell your wife, Mamacita linda de mi vida. You're amazing. You're awesome. Man, God created you. You are perfect. Turn around. Let me see you once again. Eh? Some of you are like, oh, I'm not pouring any of that. Tas fea, tas gorda, tas loca. Eres una diabla. You don't want to pour any of that. I told you before, there's a lot of new people, so I can share this. A lot of new people that when you first met your wife, <laughs> she had a Coca-Cola bottle figure. Yes or no? Open her door. Took her to good restaurants. Three years later. <laughs> don't open her door. Take her anywhere. McDonald's right here, whatever. Anywhere. No, nothing. Tell her to shut up. Be quiet. And I want you to remind you, men, that you got to see like Christ sees. She's. I know she's a three liter now, but she still is a Coca Cola bottle. And she still has a sizzle. So no matter how she is, you are awesome. You're amazing. I love you. You're beautiful. Just the way you are. You're nobody but mine. Hallelujah. And then, you know you're not the same when she first met you. You too went poof, poof, poof. And you don't do what you used to do, do, do. And she, let me stop. Hold on. I'm, I'm, <laughs> let me put this away. understand what I'm saying yes love oh you I thought you were calling me love because I'm so used to you calling me love see how it turned love yes usually you should call me big daddy what don't be hating on me okay it takes a lot for you to be called big daddy That's one they don't call Big Daddy right there. Cause always messes it up. Always messes it up. Right when he was doing so good. Messes it up. Jesus. <laughs> in the house of Paul. Well, Paul. Not the house of Paul. Paul describes that in the church you will find both vessels of honor and you will find vessels of dishonor. And this is the house right here. There's vessels that you, you take out. Let's just say... When someone shows up, you bring out the good stuff, right? That's all I could find, but just a demonstration. You bring out the good stuff. You have vessels that you only use when someone important is coming to your house. You, you use that, that vessel to impress people. There's, there's someone of royalty of value coming. And then you have, the Bible says, the wooden, the wooden ones. I mean, these are good still, but still, it's just a demonstration of the wooden vessels. These are the ones that you use every day, all the time. These are the ones that you throw away in the trash. Then you got the vessels that you can use and only is for an honorable use. You know, when someone comes to your house, you want to use the good plates. Unless you go to someone's house that they're lazy, they don't want to wash dishes, they'll use the paper plates. <laughs> Nobody laughs because that's what you use. That's okay. We use paper plates too. It's me and my wife. We don't need nothing but paper plates. And you can throw them away. But here God is using the church as an, a demonstration that there are some people in the house that are of honorable and of dishonor. Those that fear the Lord and those who do not fear the Lord. Those that come in here really thirsty, seeking a change, seeking God at the feet of Jesus. And some that you're still fornicating and doing what you want to do. And you come in and you leave the same. But this is a thirsty church here 
today. Hallelujah. That when you leave here today, you become that vessel of God that said, man, I used to be that vessel that poured nothing but negativity, bitterness, anger, but now I'm leaving here full of the Holy Ghost. I'm pouring out my love, my peace, my joy. I'm not leaving here the same in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the, and the, and the, the Bible says in verse 21 that if anyone cleanses himself from the vessel of dishonor, will be a vessel of honor. You got to cleanse yourself. You got you to gotta really come in here. You don't come to the house of the Lord to be entertained. You come to the house of the Lord and say, man, I come as this vessel, a broken vessel. But God says he wants a vessel of honor. I need to respect. I need to honor my God. I need to fear God. I need to do the right things in the name of Jesus. Because if God wants to bring a fresh fire, a fresh anointing, if God wants to open up doors that no man can open and shut doors that no man can shut, then I want to be that man of honor, that woman of honor. If I can't honor my God, then I can't honor anyone else. I got to honor God. I got to love God. I got to praise God. Because if it hadn't been for the Lord, I wouldn't be sitting here today. If it hadn't been for Jesus, I wouldn't be breathing here today. But my God, he's been good to me. My God, he's been faithful to me. He's never left me. He's never will leave me. He loves me so much. When others don't love me, he loves me. Hallelujah. When others leave me, he stays with me. That's the God that I serve. And the thing is, the Bible says that if anyone cleanses himself from the vessel of dishonor, will become a vessel of honor. And watch this. It goes on to say, sanctified. Somebody say, sanctified. Cleanse you, not only cleanse you, but sanctify you. And be useful for the master purpose for every good work. Prepared, ready. Are you ready to be used by the master? Are you ready to be used by God? And some people say, pastor, I don't want to be a hypocrite. There's a lot of hypocrites in the house of the Lord. Lots of hypocrites in every house of the Lord. Not everybody is saved. Not everybody is sanctified. Sanctified means you are set apart. That means that you used to be a vessel of dishonor. You didn't care what people said. It's my way or the highway. What I say goes. I don't have a problem. I can drink as much as I want. Smoke as much as I want. I know what I'm doing. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not an addict. I got a job. I'm a good husband, but you're still lost because without Jesus, you're just a vessel of dishonor. A vessel of honor is the one that says, when I say yes to Jesus, I no longer drink, I no longer smoke, I no longer cuss. The old has gone, the new has risen. I used to be like that, but I'm no longer like that anymore. That used to be me back in the day. I was angry, but now I'm full of joy, I'm full of peace. I love my God, I love my wife, I love my children. I no longer want to be the vessel of dishonor. And this is good. This is good. Because this is something that when you're set apart, you're set apart and you are ready for, for the work of the Lord. There's a purpose in your life. God doesn't come to you to set you free so you can still be in bondage. Bondage is like if I had a prison cell right here, it's like you still look at pornography, you still cuss, you still drink, you're still fornicating. I'm, I'm not here to judge anyone. I'm just preaching the truth. And if you're here and you're doing any of those things, praise the Lord. Because God can change you in a second. God can remove things immediately. I sat in a church where pastors preached about drinking and smoking. And I was so in love with God that I didn't get upset. I went back home. And I got the alcohol, got the drugs, got the cigarettes, and I destroyed it before it destroyed me. Because I love, and I was afraid of God that much. There are some wise people in this house that maybe it's the first time hearing something the way it was my first time. I said, but I love God. And God says, I know you love me. Why do you think I keep on waking you up? Because I'm not done with you yet. I'm waiting for you to let go and let me be God. I'm waiting for you to say 
I'm letting go of everything, but I'm holding on to the hand of God. Hallelujah. When you're ready to let go of him and her and that and this and them, then hold on to the hand of God. It's going to hurt you, but you're going to live a good life, a righteous life, a life that leads you to victory in the name of Jesus. In the, back, in the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 26, Matthew 23, verse 26, there's a vessel that is used here. And the vessel, it's like a dish. It's, a, it's, it's actually a cup that is being used. When Jesus, he challenges the Pharisees. He challenges the teachers of the law. These are people that look good. They, they look good in the outside. They know the word. They know how to go to church. They know how to pray. They know how to lift up their hands. You can confuse people like that. Say, man, those guys are sanctified. But look at Jesus. He tells him, you are hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup while the inside is full of greed. It's full of self-indulging. The outside looks good, but don't let anyone see the inside. I, they see you here on Sundays, but they don't even know how you talk on Monday at work, how you act over there on Tuesday with your family. They don't know how you're cussing your wife out or you're cussing your children out. You look good here, but why don't you be good not only on Sunday, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Why don't you be a Holy Ghost on fire, man of God, every day of your life? Don't be a part-time Christian because you'll never defeat a full-time devil being a part-time Christian. You need to be a full-time on fire fire, Holy Ghost, man, and woman of God that say, I will stand, I will fight. The way I am here, that's the way I am at work. The way I'm at work, that's the way I'm at home. For Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if greater is he that is in us, we should be the same all the days of our life as well. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. God is so, so good. He's so faithful. When you come to the house of the Lord, listen, our church is really on the move. And as I hear things that are going on within the body of Christ, we must be doing something good. When, you, when, when the hits come, when the bombs are being let loose to come and destroy you, that's when you know that God is on the move. Because when you hear the sheriffs and the horses and the enemies, the darkness, the principalities is what we taught on Wednesday. That the battle's not against flesh and blood. In other words, he's not the problem, she's not the problem. It's the principalities, the powers of darkness, the little demons that are sent out to go and mess your mind, to go and mess with your finances and mess with your family and your children. And if you don't know how to fight in the spiritual realm, if you don't know about spiritual war, if you don't know where you stand with Jesus, you will be defeated for the rest of your life. But when you stand and say, I, I might not know exactly all about Jesus, but I know that he set me free in the name of Jesus. I know that I'm no longer who I used to be. I'm not there yet, but I'm forgetting what's behind me. And I'm pushing forward for what's ahead of me. And for what's head ahead of me, there's a lot of great things ahead of me. I'm pushing forward in the name of Jesus. Is there anyone here pushing forward in the name of Jesus? Forget about the past. Forget about what happened yesterday. Yesterday is gone. For this is a new day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. When you can truly, truly understand and know who you are, who your father is, and know that all hell, the army of hell, what you read in Ephesians chapter 6, has been dispatched to take you out. Think about it. You look around, you don't see too many men still standing from the retreats from last year, the year before, but there are a few remnant, a few that are still standing. If you've been to the retreat before and you're still here, can you make some noise? Come on, look around. 
you been to retreat, stand up, women and men. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know that I know that every single person that stood up, it hasn't been all smooth and fun. It's been hell. It's been crazy hell. To the point you want to leave, you want to quit, you want to give up. So when you stood up right now, the demons, they tremble. They tremble. Because you know that you know you shouldn't be here right now. You know that you know you shouldn't be here right now. But by the grace of God, hallelujah, you're still standing, you're still breathing. So I don't know about you, but you should praise the name of Jesus here today. Through the fire, hallelujah. You've been through the fire, but you're still standing because there's a fourth man in the fire with you. He will not let you die. He will not let you burn. You will survive. You will live. You will be that victor and not the victim in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you understand, if you stood up, and even if you haven't gone to retreat, but you been serving the Lord and you're still standing you are a vessel of the Lord Almighty but don't be that vessel that is not a, a vessel of dishonor be a vessel of honor when people look at you and say that's the real man of God that's the real woman of God maybe you have a reputation already maybe you have a reputation of a cycle that you're in and out, in and out. You can never get it together. Maybe that's what you're known for. But God still brings you here. He still believes in you. I'll tell you what I told a barber that was cutting my hair the other day. He was just cutting my hair. I don't even know this guy. I asked him, how long you been here? He said about two years. Best thing I could have ever done in my life. I have a brand new baby, eight months, just got married, just got my house. And me cutting hair right here, it's the best decision I've ever made in my life. As he's cutting my hair, I'm just sitting there and I just said, so proud of you. And he stopped his clippers. I said, well, you're right. I said, wow. I go, what happened? He goes, I haven't heard those words in a long time. And I want to tell each and every one of you, God is so proud of you. So proud of you. You might not think he's proud of you because of what you've done, but he brought you here today that my plans are not to harm you, but to prosper you in the name of Jesus. He is so proud of you that you still show up, no matter how, but you show up drunk, high, angry, but you're still here in the name of Jesus. That means that God's about to do a new thing in your life. Hallelujah. His holy name. Did you hear me? He's about to do a new thing in your life. A new thing. Because there's some utensils that if you be honest, the first question I asked earlier, what's, if you're a container, what are you carrying in you? Is it still a problem with lust? A problem with adultery, pornography, anger, alcohol? You can't stop. You want to do good, but you can't do good. Still talking back to your wife, to your husband. And if that's in you and you stood and you say, I'm a vessel of God, I gave my life to Jesus, then you need to check yourself. And you got to be honest with yourself. You got to be like what I talked about the last time, that the prodigal son, you got to come to yourself, a realization that it's me. I'm the vessel. I'm the one. No one's going to put me out. I put myself out. Because you are all adults here. You know what's right and you know what's wrong. And if God brought you here to tell you, you got the power and the authority. And if he brought you here to tell you to take dominion, to take the trash out before the trash takes you out, you better act and you better start doing something and take action and tell the devil, today is a new day. I will no longer be a vessel of this honor. 
but a vessel of honor in the name of Jesus. I will praise the Lord. I will fear God. I will lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I will open up my mouth and say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Come on, somebody praise his holy name. A lot of people here in this church, since the very beginning, we always talk about Nehemiah building. When you give your life to Jesus, you begin to build what was destroyed. Maybe your marriage was in chaos, or maybe it's in chaos right now. You got to build. Say, Pastor, I don't know how to build. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Before you speak, be slow to speak and quick to hear. Listen to the voice of God. Don't talk to her or him. Walk outside and talk to him. Say, Jesus, I'm about to go into a conversation with my wife and my husband. Before I say anything, and anything, any stupid things are going to come out of my mouth, I ask you that you anoint my lips. Let it be you speaking through me, Father God. And open up his ears and her ears, specific prayers. And then go in and just say, okay, let's talk. Vice versa. If y'all can't talk for more than two minutes without arguing, y'all need to really pray. And be honest with each other. Be honest with each other. Say, remember, I always talk about this. Two Coke cans. You get two Coke cans. You shake them. You put them down. You open the first can right away. What's going to happen? It's going to explode everywhere. The same Coke can that you shook with the other one, leave it alone for a couple hours. Come back. Open it. It will not explode. You need to be like that. When you want to say something, mm, hold it. Walk outside. Do what you got to do. When you come back, it'll be like nothing ever happened because you let the waves come. And the devil's like, ah, why did they receive that? You're receiving knowledge. You're receiving understanding. What the devil thought he was going to destroy, you can tell the devil, I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. Hallelujah. Because I know better now. Hey, I used to act like that, but that was the old vessel. I'm a vessel of honor now. Hey, hallelujah. Come on, praise his holy name. Praise God. And everything that we build, everything we build shall be tested by water, fire. The Bible says in the book of Luke, in the book of Luke chapter 6, starting in verse 46, all the way to 69. Luke, if you're taking notes, Luke chapter 6, starting in verse 46 through 49. It says, so why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord? Why? When you don't do what I say, I will show you. It's like when someone comes to me, listen to my teaching, and then follows it. It is like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. That when the flood water rises and breaks against the house, it stands firm because it is well built. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey, it's like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. When the flood sweeps down against that house, it collapses into heaps of ruins. There's some vessels, some dishonorable vessels. There's some honorable vessels. Some will hear today's message and you will apply it. You will be so to speak. You, you will be Remembering these words from the Lord today, it's, it's, it's a test from the enemy, but it's also a test from God to see how you're going to handle it. And when, if that's you to say, you know what, I do have alcohol in my refrigerator. I still got drugs I got to get rid of. I got magazines. I got things on my computer that are taking me out. I got some people I need to cut ties with. There's some people like that. And when you start doing that and seeking God more and not caring about whatever anybody else says, because you're not here to please man and woman. You're here to please the creator of heaven and earth. And once you make a decision to follow Jesus and to go deeper with God and say, you know what? I'm going to Bible study. I'm going to show up on Wednesdays. I'm going to show up on Sundays. I just need more of God. When you become that person 
you become like the builder that builds his house on the rock. The rock is Jesus. And when the wind comes, and when the storm comes, and when all hell breaks loose, <coughs> because your house is built on the rock, <coughs> it will still stand. Everybody that stood here, you remember this. Don't be like the vessels that you hear the word. <coughs> you hear the word. You say hallelujah. You go back home. You go back to the same ways. That's a house built on sand. When the storm comes, the wind comes, and all hell breaks loose, you fall apart. Your house won't stand. Begin to divide. Begin to separate. <coughs> you, you begin to start speaking like, forget this God stuff. It's not working. It's because you're not built on the rock. You got to go through the fire. And when you go through the fire, just keep your mouth shut in a nice way. Don't say nothing. Just lay there. Even if it hurts. Knowing that you're in the hands of the potter. And he's creating you to be an amazing vessel. He's making you to become a masterpiece in the name of Jesus. And when you just learn how to just be quiet and just say, God, it hurts. And he's going to tell you, I know all about pain. I sent my only son to die for you. But Jesus, they talk about me all the time. It's not even my fault. And God says, if they did it to me, they're going to do it to you. But I'm going through all this hell. And God says, listen, I went through it myself. But I keep on falling. And Jesus said, I fell with the cross. But I got back up in the name of Jesus. Hey. And if I live in you, you can get back up as well. Don't stop fighting. Keep on moving in the name of Jesus. If they did it to him, they will do it to him. But you are an honorable vessel of God. And no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Because you are the head. You're not the tail. You're above and you're not beneath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Man, listen. I'm good. <clears throat> Every time the Holy Ghost starts moving, it's like the enemy, the spirit, the, the, the principalities are released to come and shut you up. But the principalities, as I said on Wednesday, are subject not only to God, but the believer in Christ. So as the devil is released to try to take you out, you can just stand. He'll try to come at you, but he's, he cannot touch you because you are a believer in Christ. He can try and do what he wants to do, but he will not succeed in the name of Jesus. Because the devil, you don't even have to fight because he's already been defeated a long time ago on that cross. All you got to do is carry your cross daily in the name of Jesus. And when it gets tough, you get tougher. When you want to go down, stand. When you don't have no strength, still stand in the name of Jesus. And lift up your hands and praise his holy name because he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Somebody praise the name of Jesus here today. Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. God is such a faithful God. Every, can you imagine all of you from the back, everybody, every one of you here, dressed for battle. Can you imagine the impact we can have in our city? But it's sad that some people will still leave the same. No joy, no peace, upset, angry. Why? Because you keep on looking at your circumstances. And it looks like that will never change. Guess what? It will never change. 
But when you come here and you have faith as small as a mustard seed, and you look at that and you say, that has nothing, nothing, and it's nothing that God can do. Because my God, he is large, he's in charge, he is Jehovah Jireh, he is my banner, he is the Prince of Peace, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the beginning, he's the end, he's the author, he's a doctor, he's a lover of my soul, he's my attorney, he's my every single day. As long as I got Jesus, I have everything. Amen. So don't come in here saying, Lord, Lord, just praising him and then go in and live the way you want to live. You leave here, leave here different. Man and woman of God in this house. When you go back to work, to your family's house, like that, like that, from a salt to palm, that fast. Where you're about to drink and go barbecue and go somewhere where you show up with a with a 12 pack of Coca-Cola's and a Sprite and they look at you and say, where's the Michelob and where's the Coronas? And they say, man, the only Corona that I know is the Corona de Cristo, hallelujah. Yes. I'm, about, I'm about to change my life. I have some frescas right here. Zero, zero calories in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Freak them out. Say, what in the world? I guarantee you, little by little, they're not going to invite you no more. But praise Jesus. Look at the family you have in the house of the Lord here today. We can barbecue together. We can get drunk in the Holy Ghost together. We can party together. We can get high on Jesus Christ together. We can do all things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell, tell me, tell me your name behind that. Um, um, Dora is not here, but what's what's what it? Lydia, Lydia, Lydia is a faithful woman of God, and I I see you, Lydia, but I so I don't see Dora next to you, but I spoke to Dora. Dora is a faithful woman of God as well. She's in her last process. I believe she's already done. And I just wanted to tell you that that seat between both of you ladies will be occupied because Dora's cancer be gone in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. She'll be sitting right there, praising the name of Jesus, right there where you're at. Because we are here to set the captives free. Hallelujah. To cast out demons, to declare that there is healing in the name of Jesus, that cancer will be gone, diabetes be gone, and every single seat will be filled with Holy Ghost, men and women of God, vessels of honor. Come on, let's give it up for Lydia, for standing strong in the name of Jesus. I just wanted to tell her that because she, she has faith, she knows but I, I talked to Dora, and, and uh, she's a lady, been with her forever, and and she was fighting cancer, but she was really surprised that I called her, me and my son, we prayed for her, and I know she's coming back. And if there's anyone here that you not see, pray that they will come back stronger than ever. The Bible says that he, when he started, he will finish it stronger than when it was from the very beginning. Amen. I want to thank God, first of all, for allowing me to preach this message without me choking and dying even though I've been coughing and coughing all the way till I came up here but God always always gives me the strength now when I walk off the stage like the way I did Wednesday I was down man I don't stay in bed I should I keep on fighting it seems that when I stay in bed I get sicker I don't get gooder and gooder but <laughs> that word become real famous should put it in the dictionary but I feel gooder right now. <laughs> pray for your pastor as I pray for you on a daily basis. For the next 21 days, <laughs> we started this on Wednesday. For the next 21 days, what will be the deadline? On the 26th, if you started Thursday praying, this Thursday, if you started, it will be the 26th. 
if you're starting today, begin to pray and then count 21 days. We're not doing the Daniel fast as far as eating stuff. I'm talking about some intense prayer. Prayer that within 21 days, we're going to see an answered prayer. If you missed it on Wednesday, we preached on the book of Daniel chapter 10. That when he prayed for 21 days, by that time he was on all fours, tired, exhausted for fasting and praying for 21 days. An angel came and told Daniel, from the very beginning, when your prayers came out of your mouth, the Lord has heard your prayers. But there's a principality, a demonic angelic that looks like an angel withheld your blessing. But God sent an angel to go and release that blessing. If he would have stopped on the 20th day, maybe he wouldn't have received that blessing. The moral of the whole story is that even if you don't see it in the next few days or a week or you don't see any change in the 20th day, hold on tight. Because when he was on all fours, an angel came to him and said, stand and look at me in my eyes. He said, the Lord has heard your prayers from the very first day it came out of your mouth. That's for somebody here today. Your blessing is on its way. If you are being going through some hell, just know that there's some angels in your behalf that have been dispatched as well. Hallelujah. And the blessing is about to show up. But don't go weary in doing good. Keep on praising the name of Jesus even when it doesn't make no sense. Come on, somebody praise the name of Jesus. Let's, let's just right there where you're at. If there's anyone in this house that say, Pastor, I want to just feel that fire. I don't feel it. Or I want to I wanna know that if I die, that I will make it to heaven. There's a heaven and there's a hell. I don't want to be that vessel of dishonor. I'm tired of that. I want to be a vessel of honor. If you're ready, if you're ready to receive Christ. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. She has one. Mary Science? Yes, Mary Science. We all know Mary Science. She's battling cancer. She asked for prayer. Where two or three are gathered, Jesus is in the midst. Mary will be here as well. She's a strong woman of God. Praise in the name of Jesus. If you're in this place and you said, I need Jesus in my life. I want to start afresh. New today is a day of salvation. If you're ready, I want you to just lift up your hands and say this prayer with me. We're going to say it with you. God knows exactly who you are. Your life will never be the same after today. You will become a vessel of honor. You will leave here with your head lifted up high. Here we go. Repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for everything, for all my sins. You died on the cross for me. And I believe that. But I also know that on the third day, you rose again. And I'm asking you that you come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. And Jesus, I want my name written on the book of life. I want to thank you, Father. Today, I become a vessel of honor. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone say, amen. Come on, somebody give it up for the Lord. Give somebody a high five, hallelujah.